All right, ladies and gentlemen, Victory Monday. We're back. This is getting to be a, a habit. It's here on my block podcast. Packers Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Well, Thanks for watching. If you're enjoying, please subscribe, rate, and review on that uh, Process to Perform channel on YouTube. You can check our show out for the audio version of our show anywhere you get your podcast on the Believe Network. And as always, our show is available because of our wonderful sponsors, our platform, the Believe Network. The holiday season is often rolling in full stride. The NBA and NHL are hitting mid-season form. Bet Online is your number one destination for all your sports wagering info. With up-to-minute sports wagering news, odds, trends, and predictions, Bet Online is the top spot for everything pro and amateur sports. And not just the big four, Bet Online has info available at your fingertips with both desktop and mobile access at any time for almost any sport that is played from mixed martial arts to international Soccer, which happens to be the biggest sport in the world. Head to the Bet Online site today and remember to use your promo code Believe B L A V for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online where the game starts. Here's the deal, guys. Jordan's loves Jordan Love stock is rising right now. The kid is playing well. And it's not. So the Packers win the game 27 to 19. And the story is like you're getting the ball twice in the first half. I mean, the possessions are at a premium. So it's like what goes into a game like that? And really, there's two things I think that they kind of separate this game. Because the Chiefs' the defense is really – everybody's going to talk about Patrick Mahomes, but the Chiefs' defense is really what's coming and playing well. But this team's ability to keep them honest, to keep away their, their, their blitz, their pressure packages, by keeping them honest with the end arounds, with the jet sweeps, with the under center play action pass. The ability to do that, the ability to hit the open targets, the ability to throw on rhythm, the ability to, to get rid of the ball when you need to get rid of the ball – but maybe most importantly, and this is an obvious, but the ability to run the football, averaging over five yards a carry for maybe, I don't know, the first time in a long time. I think A.J. Dillon, maybe not statistically, but for me, one of his best, if not the best, what a game he's played all season. It really goes to show you what this, how far this young group has has come. And, and, and what really is, you know, when you look at it now, a short time. And, and again, for as – as um, honest, I'm not going to say critical, but if, as honest as we and, and candid as we try to be on this show about what was going on earlier in the season and some of the decisions from maybe from a coaching perspective, like it's not perfect, but I think what Matt Lafleur is doing and and the way he's given this kid some opportunities to grow and he's kind of held him back and they've because he's not Aaron Rodgers and he's not Brett Favre. You know, he doesn't have that person. He doesn't he doesn't have that presence. So he probably doesn't have that personality. But what they've done, and in this last couple of games, it's just like, hey, you know, trust your eyes and trust your guys. Trust your eyes and trust your guys. You see it, throw it. If you think your guy can make the play, let it rip. Christian Watson's touchdown in the back of the end zone. I think it's second one on the scene. Not it's not a scene but throws it kind of back shoulder. The catch was great. The throw was ridiculous. That throw is absurd. And then there's a couple other that he throws, you know, the throw to Dobbs out. It's got, we'll show it on, t- on tape. You can't, you can't catch it if you don't throw it. So it's not, some people go, man, how did they not pick that ball off? But it's like, sometimes you got to give your, your, your players a chance to make plays. And what I like personally is I like the arm arrogance. Like, I like the arm arrogance that he shows sometimes now. He's like, throw it off his back foot. And no, it's not It's not what you want all the time. And when he steps into a throw, you see the difference in velocity and accuracy and trajectory and all of that. But sometimes it's like you got to let it go and let your guy go make a play. And I think one of the big differences between maybe September, October, and now is he's doing he's trust your eyes, trust your guys. So we got two main takeaways for this game. What I'm talking about right now, Jordan Love, he, he really outplays – Patrick Mahomes, that's probably not fair because I would I would argue that Jordan Love's supporting cast, given how they're playing right now, is is much better. And even up front is is much better. But uh, Jordan Love's 25, 36, 267 yards, three touchdowns, no picks. That's second. That's basically last week's game. I think last week he was like 268 and three touchdowns, no picks. You know, 21 for 34 or something like that. But basically last week's game, he just had a replica. And again, he's giving these guys, and we could talk about any number of players here. When we talk about Christian Watson, we talk about Romeo Dobbs. 
uh, Dontavian Wicks, Tucker Kraft, Jaden Reed, uh, Heath, A.G. Dillon's getting the pass. I mean, Sims caught his first touchdown. And we've, you're just getting a lot of dudes involved. And I think when you look at this Matt LaFleur offense, as opposed to, just as a contrast, as opposed to the, Dante, the uh, Devontae Adams, Aaron Rodgers kind of portion of this, um, this cycle, look how many guys are catching the football. Let me check last night just to make sure I'm, I have this right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different receivers last night. I mean, what more? If you're if you're uh, if you're an offensive player and you're all everybody's young. AJ Dillon's the oldest guy on the team right now. It seems like, but or at least in the skill room. But if you're all these young guys, they're just you know you're trying to grow up together, and it starts working. It's like it's working, and everyone knows they can eat. I mean, think about the. What, here's what it does. The competition now at practice to get your name on the call sheet for, for plays, to get in the game, to get more reps, is going to elevate the play of everyone in that wide receiver room, everyone in that tight end room, especially when Musgrave gets comes back. The running back, Patrick Taylor played well last night when he got his opportunities, at least you know, holding the football. And it just – that – Look, success and success, uh, spread out success, it breeds competition, elevates play. It elevates the way you prepare. I've just I've been there, I'm telling you. So that's probably the most exciting part about this. The players are spending more time together. It was, it was talked about, I think maybe last week or the week before, that love, the, the skill position guys, the younger, they're actually they're, they're spending some more time together, maybe not with the coaches. And what I mean by that is, they're going and watching the tape together. This is the expectation. Maybe they're staying on the field, but a little bit the practice field longer and kind of going through plays, making sure everybody's on the same page. And it's amazing. I tweeted this out last night. It is amazing consistently what confidence in preparation, like how that translates to confidence in execution. It's such a simple formula, but for whatever reason, and maybe it was prompted by the head coach. I don't know. Maybe it was prompted by Jordan Love. I don't know. But you could see a it's like a correlation, this direct correlation between, okay, we're going to put in a little extra time, communicate, make sure we're on the same page. Because you remember a couple of weeks ago, they were not on the same page. It was ugly. Every game there was like, you know, who's on first? And now it's everything. It just feels like everything's working. And that was, again, that was a good Chiefs defense. Losing Tranquil early in the game, was that a problem? Yes, it was a huge problem for them. Losing their safety early in the game, was that a problem? Yeah, you got to play with who's in the game. Not our problem. They played extremely well. Jordan Love, he's not – he doesn't there, – There's. we can sit here and say what he has and he doesn't have. The, the style that he's going to play with, it looks like, how Matt LaFleur is using him under center play action. I mean, just all the stuff we talked about in, in our preview show. Under center play action pass, right? Moving the pocket. Escape when it's time to go, go. Timing routes to the outside. Like – He's it's just it's all there. And you know, it's like if I see it, other teams see it, so they're gonna have to continue to evolve and make adjustments. But it's all there. What he's good at is all right in front of him. And as long as they can run the ball somewhat effectively, AJ Dillon runs like he does did yesterday, man, they are in good shape. The flip side of this, I'm not gonna sit here and badmouth this defense because they play you hold the you hold Patrick Holmes at under 20, great day. He, uh, Nixon's pick, ridiculous, okay? The play of Preston, the play of Rashawn Gary up front, really, really good. That's a pass rush lane integrity problems we'll look at. But if this, if this team wants to continue to build, because they're going to play this schedule, we'll go through it later. It's, it's cupcake schedule for the rest of the time. They're going to go to the playoffs. They're going to make the playoffs unless something catastrophic happens. If they want to make some noise, we – we're currently 29th in the league at rushing, you're giving up rushing yards, 136 a game. They gave up, what, 100 and – I want to say they gave up 150 last night. 150-ish. We'll call it 150-ish. They gave up 150-ish rushing yards last night. Pacheco just won a 6.1 yards of carry. Ran through. You got to do some soul searching. And I, I say this all the time. People, listen, you don't like it, you don't like it. Isaiah McDuffie's in the game. They don't run for 6.1 yards to carry. You can take out whoever you want. If Isaiah McDuffie plays last night, the way he attacks the line of scrimmage, 
they're not rushing for 150 yards this year. And that's what is that's why the that's why possessions were at such a premium because it wasn't like we were the only team that could that could move the ball. They could move the ball whenever they wanted. They just hand it off and false forward for six. We got to fix that problem. They did a lot of things really well, but you got to fix that problem. This is a fun game. Let's watch some tape. I love the way they started, okay? So let me back this up. First play of the game, let's get let's put it in their heads. Okay, so we'll go tight end, hipped off, backs offset to the left, okay? So something's wrong there, right? Because if the tight end's hipped off, he's probably going – it looks like he's going backside, but the running back's on the wrong side for him to go, you know, run the split flow. We bring Jaden Reed over, and the tight end reaches the outside backer here. Safety's back. Just flip it to Jaden Reed. First play of the game. We've been talking about it. He's been their, their running game. And I don't mean that from a volume standpoint. But he's our Debo Samuel. He's become our Debo Samuel. He, he's the guy that if you need somebody to break a, a, a big play in the running game, you give him the ball. Now, I guess technically this is a pass because he flipped the board, but you get my sentiment. So now safety has to come down and make the play at nine yards. This is a big – I mean, what a way to start the game because what do we know already? First of all, I want to talk about the speed of the motions. It's really good. Christian Watson yesterday, the speed of their motions was really good. But we know that this team likes to pressure off the edge. What is the easiest way to get rid of the pressure? It's get the ball outside really, really fast. Okay? So just send in a message early. Fantastic. Under center play action pass. We talked about it. It simplifies the game for our quarterback. It it it, cre it creates less of a need to have really really high level pre snap indicators. Watson does a twenty yard comeback here. Absolute dime. He steps into that throw. Absolute dime. It just makes the game so much easier. We'll show another one here. So I wanted to show this play. We brought our fullback in, and. They run an end around and they do a quick toss and they're pulling Zach Tom. This is important because they're going to use this play. It doesn't, it, it, they use this play, this formation, and they show it here. And then they're going to run play action off of it later and hit the crossing round on Tucker Craft, right? And it's just a great marriage from a play caller, from Matt LaFleur play caller standpoint. Great marriage because this is a fantastic play. Um, we saw this last year with AJ Dillon and Aaron Jones. 44 gets out and ahead. And we get another good run. Second five coming across the ball with motion. They they rock and roll this a little bit. We go under center. We talked about it in the pre-show. The Kansas City Chiefs are trying to fill gaps. They bite hard on under center play action pass. Packers, I know that you know Coach LaFleur and the staff watches this show every week. They probably didn't make their game plan until after it came out on Thursday. Thank you, guys. No, no thanks necessary on my end. But they attack the line of scrimmage. Jordan Love just flips it over. Easy throw, easy catch. First down, fantastic job. Might have to here. This is one of, what, what I mean by this is we, because we can run the football and because Jordan Love's hitting the gimmies, starting to hit the gimmies, you got to keep these plays going early. Even if you know, like, they might not work. Like, this is the second time they've run a very similar play in the first drive. They run a later, they run a couple of end rounds to Watson. One works, one doesn't. But the point is, it's going to become part of your offense. It's like it's a running play for you. And that's a big deal because it takes pressure off the offensive line. It takes, pre it takes pressure off the quarterback. And it keeps pressure on a team that likes to mix it up on, at the line of scrimmage. So even though this play isn't for big yards, you might have to just keep running these things, okay? I really like the backside block here from Elgin Jenkins and Rasheed Walker. Backside B is huge. Both those guys, they displace, and they cut off the linebacker who overcommits. AJ gets down to the line. And look, clearly the Chiefs didn't watch the show. We talked about under center play action again. <laughs> they bite. Sims gets his first touchdown, one yard catch, does a Lambo leap. Good time for everybody. Now, that's what I'm talking about. McDuffie's out. We're back to catching. 
and this isn't listen all these guys are professional athletes all these guys are are are, prof- are people that are working hard to be really good at what they do there's a mindset shift that that some people have and some people don't some people are going to play to their skill sets some people are going to you know and they have different skill sets if we are not downhill attacking against their, what's the strength of the, the Kansas City Chiefs offense? It's their interior offensive line, right? Creed Humphrey and company, inter- they're really, really good. Outside guys, not very good. Donovan Smith went out, that's an even bigger problem. For, you know, six fours in, real problem for them. Those guys are good inside. So if you're going to let them double and get up on the second level and you're not going to be an attack and a, and a great stack and shed guy, you're going to get run over because Vistu Pacheco is one of the angriest looking runners I've ever seen in my life. He's just nasty. So we get the first fall, like fall forward for seven. And it just it continues on really the whole game. Checo here. And look, this is a really hard open field tackle. I think what, what, what all I'm saying is break down, shoulder contact and drive. You're hugging and holding. And I'm not saying this is easy. But there's a different mentality with different players. Some This... Look, Quay's got incredible range. He's instinctual. He's great in the passing game. But if you need a dude to stop, hey, we don't want to give up 150 anymore, put the other kid in. This is it. Look at that. Look, cornerback coming up. Valentine, great job. (laughs) Enig Bari, if you're going to say anything, I don't, I'm not going to start saying that they're swarms of the football like they never have before. I don't think that. I think they've always worked hard, right? But, again, you see there's a handful of guys on this team. Nixon right now is the one that stands out maybe the most last night of dudes that just, when it's time to come downhill, they come downhill. When it's time to thump up, and listen, Nixon got pushed back too. But it's not because he. It's not because he's not giving it everything he has. He's not catching. He's trying to be the hammer, right? Everybody's got to try to be the hammer when we're coming to tackle. That reminds me of a play when Matt Hasselbeck was, uh, he was the holder. We were in Kansas City kicking, a, I think, a PAT. And we, we did a fake field goal, went for two. And he passed it to Jeff Thomason and, and, Thomason, and everybody was going over to celebrate. And Hass did this, like he was going to jump up on the pile, moved, and he jumped up and <laughs> face locked right on the floor, man. It was terribly funny. Talk about pass rush lane integrity. And, you know, Pat, this guy's the best in the league, regardless of, of last night or, you know, he, he's the best in the league until somebody uh, usurps him, maybe Joe Burrow. But they run an ET game uh, down, down or a TE game, excuse me, on the top of the screen. And we get caught going, Devontae White gets caught going inside. Go back and show this. And you can't allow, talked about, if Patrick Mahomes sees this, Exit. Now he can turn his shoulders, get downhill. Good for the Chiefs, bad for the Packers. Just got to be really smart about our, our, our rush lane integrity. It's not always going to be perfect, and he's, or, he's going to be able to escape, but it can't be that easy. You look at it here. Rashawn Gary takes the inside, gets pushed down, and now he's got Convoy. Creed Humphrey's up on Quay. I think he's running spy. And now he makes another huge play on a third down. And it's because he gets his shoulder pads pointed towards the line of scrimmage, which is what we talked about in, in the one of the keys to victory last uh, last Thursday. You got to be just so so disciplined, and not give him the opportunity to turn his shoulders back. I show you this play because we've you know we got up on the linebacker He's at the second level. You see the you see the separation between the line of scrimmage, like the scrum and our linebacker. We want that two yards, three yards closer to the line of scrimmage. Okay? Why? Because it takes away cutting lanes for the running back. You have a lane you're supposed to fill. You have responsibilities. It's not like they just they roam back there and just do whatever they want. you got to attack this and be able to get off it because, again, this is a Pacheco easy run, you know, big play for him in the game. These are the things where if you want to get better, it's first, you know, first drive, if you're trying to send a message – Send a message with your physicality. Now, we end up doing that here with the defensive line. Big deal. Uh, 
Van Ness gets his, I think, second sack of the career. I think he had a chase down early in the first game of the season. So 64 is in the game. Van Ness is – look, Van Ness is probably the least developed pass rusher on the team, quite frankly. And he'll get better and all of that. I'm not, this is not a bad mouth. He just is. He's the same rush every time. But the good news is he works his ass off. And because Enigbari down here pushes Juwan Taylor to the point where Patrick Mahomes can't escape – forward and he has to go out the back end Van Ness just runs the corner and gets his second sack of the year and it, like it's that easy don't let him escape okay you're not going to make this play all the time but the chance of Van Ness running the loop and catching him on the backside is a hell of a lot better than him trying to redirect from where he's at if, if Patrick Holmes tries to shoot through the A of the B gap now I wanted to point this out I thought this was odd Are we shaving our armpits now? Because I was always a non-shave armpit guy uh, when I was playing, but maybe that's a new trend. And now we got Rashawn Gary, who, listen, Juwan Taylor, he got paid a ton of money to come over here. And they got to be thinking, like, what did we do? That's a terrible – so he kicks flat. And right at the first kick, I, I guarantee you, if you ask Rashawn, when did you know he was beat? He would say the first, his first step was terrible. And he's just in a position to get – Beat like a drum. Look at that angle. Great job. And then great job by Kenny here staying with it. And then Rashawn finishing up for another sack. He's just playing so high level right now. He's elite, elite, elite. Keeping him honest. Okay. We just shot, we just showed this play. This is the start of the second course. This is really the second series. So you just showed the play. 44 comes up at the top. They run the quick toss. Everybody bites. And now you see Tucker Craft open for the crossing route. This is what, when you talk about how to construct an offense so that everybody feels like, man, I can't, like, it's almost like I can't wait till they call that play. You run, you run the toss crack with, with the lead blocker. Then you fake it and you run the drag because the defensive end and the linebackers are all going to be staring at the ball as soon as they see 44 go in motion where their eyes are just going to go to the left. Tucker Craft takes it out the back door. He had a great game last night. Under center play action. They bring five. They don't get home. Sean Rashid Walker slips a little bit. Could have been a takedown. Two points. It happens. End up with a big tater away. I mean, this kid, it's like it's like in the spring, you didn't even know he was on the team. What a find. What a find for Goody. Okay, first touchdown for Watson. So they're bracket coveraging. I'm sitting there watching the game, and I'm sure everybody else is sitting there, and they, you go, you go, how the hell did he get so open? If I was going to cover anybody down here, I'd cover him, especially on, like, a crossing route, right? Well, so they bracket him. You see the, you see the safety staring at him right here. But because Jordan Love buys a little bit of time, steps up in the pocket, the eyes go to the quarterback, and then – there's nobody in the back of the end zone. So Watson's like, okay, well, I, you guys don't know that I'm faster than everyone on this field right now. And Jordan Love just stands a flat-footed, uh, spot, you know, perfect pass. It's fantastic. Now, the referees are having a really, really tough time. And there's a number of reasons for it. I think, number one, the, the way that they're legislating skill out of the game, the way that they're legislating these big hits out of the game, it makes, a, it, makes it difficult for these guys, okay? I get that. But Creed Humphrey gets a holding call here. And I'm an offensive lineman first. Listen, I, you know, I'm, I'm Packers fan, Chiefs, whatever. But he's got TJ Slayton just absolutely gloved up. Both hands are inside. Gloved up. Can't do it any better. Sat on his bull. Can't do it any better. Mahomes runs for a first down or darn near it, and they call holding on him. And listen, it had, great for the Packers. It ended up being a field goal. I, that's great. I don't like watching this because there'll be a play later on. Rasheed Walker, the same thing happens to him when, when Jordan Love escapes the outside. And I got to sit there and listen to Chris Collinsworth, whoever's on TV, talk about like Jordan Love's making up for the mistakes of everybody else. And it's like, it's not it at all. That's not how this game is played. Quarterback leaves the pocket. It's a free-for-all. Now, every week it seems like my defensive MVP, Preston Smith, 
gets another Preston Smith appreciation post. Donovan Smith comes back in the game to the left tackle, very quickly beats him, gets around the corner, gets a sack on Mahomes. And we get the great celebration. Just, I, you just can't say enough about the job that some of these guys do. Like, like unks, not unks on heroes, but it, what, what a great player. Need this, okay? Josh Myers at the end of the play. Just dump him. Just dump him. Let's watch it again. Let's watch it again in real time. Just dump him. Listen, I want to see so much more of that. What I what you're starting to see is a little bit of that. You got we just call it. You used to call it. You had a little shit to you. You're starting to see some of these guys. Keyshawn Nixon, obviously Preston and Rashawn Gary. Isaiah McDuffie when he's in the game. Rudy Ford when he's in. You're starting to see some of these guys. Okay, offensive line wise, you want to see that. Who's who's the guy? Who's the guy that's just gonna? You see Runyon trying to do it sometimes. Right, we got to be able to dominate physically a little bit more consistently, I think, to be that guy. Jenkins could be this guy if he wanted to. You know, he's got that physical tool set where he can he puts people in bad positions sometimes. But who's going to be that? Where? How do we take that next step? Who's going to be that guy? You see this from from Kelsey, and I showed the end zone copy. Forgive me, guys. This is all I, I could get in, in this time. So Kelsey's over here stacked on the on the left. And you're going to see he's going to run a fake post and then just take it back outside. The back coming across Mahomes' face takes the linebacker to the flat. And he's just wide open. And a lot of these plays, a lot of these plays, he's sitting down in zones. In other words, a lot of these plays, if you were playing with somebody else, uh, they would continue this route to the, the, the sideline. Kelsey's got this – I think he's got this uh, deal with Mahomes that he just kind of, hey, I'm going to get open in this area. Okay, I'm not running this route. I'm getting open in this area. We see the exit downhill again. And this is a third – I think this is like third and 18. But you, this is a big play in the game. And you always have to wonder – I think to, for me this is the worst defense and you know, this is the worst scheme in existence. Okay, and I'm talking about it's like prevent, right? The third down, we're going to stay at the sticks. We're playing eight yards off. We're rushing three. We're giving the best quarterback on the planet as much time as he wants to throw. And then we're going to let all the receivers get deep so he can run or he can make it, you know, these underneath passes. Like, it just – I know you have to do it, but for me, it's like I'd rather watch you run the tunnel screen or, you know, do like some kind of – and see if you can get me for 18 yards. Like, I want the ball out of Mahomes, you know, his hands as fast as possible. Because this – like – this isn't like the first time he's made that throw to Kelsey, right? Okay, well, I'm just going to keep putting it up until somebody listens. You know, you, you get McDuffie out of the game, and we're back to catch. You see, the, you just see the separation. The, the, the line of scrimmage is being pushed back to our linebackers. They're not coming towards the line of scrimmage, right? It's a philosophical thing maybe with, with Joe Barry. Maybe he switches only when there's certain players in. But it's also certainly the way, the style in which they want to play. And so, you know, we get, we finally get the guy wrapped up and he runs through the tackle. And listen, this guy's a ferocious runner, man. I mean, he's a really good player. But there's got to be a mindset of, hey, we're going against a dog this week. Like, we got to get low. We got to attack. We want him to lower his shoulder. When he lowers his shoulder, he's going for four more. So we might as well try to get him behind the line of scrimmage. You see here, I just, you know, Walker gets him wrapped. Owens is in there. Darnell Savage is coming. I mean, it's not like we don't have him wrapped up, right? But he's just, you got to get him down. Anybody that finally does, but you see how difficult he is. And the guy's a, the guy's a stud. Now, who's on first skit? Sometimes it's just not working. And, you know, we, you know, everyone's saying, hey, we really want, you know, multiple down linemen in this, in, under the 10 yard line and blah, 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 blah. But we can't find a guy who's Kenny Clark's not in the right position. So literally the right guard, right tackle, are like, oh, who should I block up to Quay? This is really easy. And so the center gets up on Quay. They get an easy double, obviously, on Kenny. And they push this ball for another five down. The, you know, they go six yards from the 11 down to the five-yard line. It's just got to get it. Got to get it. So they end up scoring. 
12-14 game. Anything's happening. Exciting. Third quarter. And this is one of the plays of the game. And here's all I'll say. People say, what do you think about that you know, throw from Jordan Love and blah, blah. Listen. Instead of critiquing the back foot throw, what, you can't catch the damn ball if he doesn't throw it. And the thing that you got to say about this kid right now is, this young man, is he is trusting his eyes and he's trusting his guys. He's letting his guys go out and make plays. So he, he feels some pressure here from the middle. He's got to throw it off his back foot, which, by the way, he throws half his passes off his back foot. He's very comfortable doing it, right? Everyone's talking about arm angles, talking about body weight uh, distribution. It's crazy. But he throws this thing up, and you look at here, and you're like, dude, this is a – that ball was in the air for a long time. And how this comes down in the hands of, of I think this is Dobbs, is incredible, but it does. And you can't make the play if you don't throw the ball. And so what happens? They show one-on-one -on -one matchup with Christian Watson. I think it's against Trent McDuffie. I could be wrong. But they go empty, right? We got a hipped off tight end to help on, help on the outside. But we go empty, so they go man. And it's like we have our two guys, our playmakers over on the right, and you can just pick which one. And for me, this might be the throw of the year for him. I mean, this is a ridiculous throw. Christian Watson doesn't win. But he puts the ball in a place that only Christian Watson, you know, six foot four, whatever he is, can get up. Oh, that's not McDuffie. My bad. Can get up, turn his body, kind of a, almost a back shoulder on, on the, on the, uh, the cloud route and and get up and down for it. I mean that is a that's a good catch. You'll see that catch again. That is it. That is a ridiculous throw in that situation. Absolutely ridiculous throw. Pacheco, we just talked about, you know, you're holding the Chiefs for 19 points. That's a big deal. Not minimizing it. Kind of trying to like how do we build, right? 6.1 yards per carry. This is why the possessions were at such a premium. We're back. And we're just not – you just see it. You're not attacking. Like, like if I turn on the tape from last week, dudes are hitting the, hitting the scene, hitting those gaps. We're dragging for no, – another fall forward for seven or eight. Now, this is a rookie mistake from Carl Brooks, who's been playing at high level. Now, Jawan Taylor, he allows Jawan Taylor, who has no business cutting him off by himself. He allows Juwan Taylor to cut him off by himself so Pacheco has this lane. Now, the guard, this isn't Quay's fault. The guard's just releasing up to the second level. Now, does, can Quay come downhill and do a better job and blah, blah, blah? Sure. But backside, if the guard leaves and you're the three technique, you're, you can't get cut off. Like, he can't wheel on you like this. And maybe I'll watch this from, from the end zone copy and see something different. But that's a big play because this ends up being that, like, Let's just scrum the hell out of this for an extra 10, you know, and then they end up scoring the next, you know, maybe the next play, next two plays. So now it's 1921. Packers go back to the basics, under center play action. And these guys are smart now. They're, they're not biting quite as hard. to talk about the linebackers. They were biting hard the first half. You should have seen them last week in, the, in their game last week. Just ridiculous, okay? And you got to remember – their best player, their best linebacker, Drew, uh, Drew Tranquil, is out of the game. So things are a little bit different. But you see now, turns his back. The replacement turns his back to the line of scrimmage. Okay? Stayed there long enough, hesitated long enough. He's got to go find the crossing route. So Jordan Love just takes off. Right? Because eyes are going the opposite way. Great job. This is just a this is a development maturation thing. Now, who knows if Jordan Love knows that the, the Kansas City Chiefs linebackers look at the wrong way? Okay. What I'm telling you is the feel for this. And then right here, yeah, you can throw it to AJ, but it's like, why? Why risk it? AJ, go get a block. AJ, go get a block. Yeah, kind of. First down. Little play action. We got the tight end. Uh you got the tight end blocking on the down, bottom of the screen. You'll see this a lot this, this game. They ran a lot of this kind of – so Zach Tom's going to block down here. 
Okay, so they're going like K4, K5. It's like a full slide. And then they got a tight end blocking out on the edge, and then they have another tight end coming across blocking out. Now, they gave up two sacks on this on this specific pass protection because the tight end got beat, or I think Zach Tom got beat the second time. But when I say Zach Tom got beat, I say really Jordan Love will, sit, will show it, makes a smart play and takes the sack. But anyways, quick out. One of the things we've been harping on as far as what he's really good at, fantastic. Now, this is tough for big guys. This is what I was talking about earlier, you know referees, everybody. Rasheed Walker does a good job resetting his hands, pushing the guy inside. Now, Jordan feels like he has to escape, which is fine because he probably feels that pressure. But you escape out here, you're on your own. Now, can Rasheed Walker let him go a little bit earlier? Sure, absolutely. This is the toughest block for big guys when the guy leaves the pocket and you don't know. And you've done a good job getting your hands clamped up inside. You feel great about yourself. All of a sudden, the dude starts like turning one way or the other. And the refs nowadays, I think, are more apt to throw this flag than ever before. Like, this isn't necessarily a flag before because it's like they know that your hands are inside the cylinder. You get you get a little bit of a leeway. It doesn't feel like you're getting leeway anymore. So throw away, but a 10-yard penalty. I just don't like that call. Talk about a great cover two beater. For those who don't know, cover two is like too high. The corner, in very, very general cover two terms, the corner is going to stay in the flat and the safety is deep half. So there's this space near the sideline from like 10 to 20 yards deep where if you can fire a rocket in there, you can run a quick little out or a little bend route and get open. So he inside releases, leaving that, that corner to sit flat and watch the tight end come out on the flat here. So he stays. And now the safety just can't get over to the 30 or 40 yard line before Jordan Love can get that play out. So cover two beater, the, the idea pre-snap, Again, we talked about it. ID, communicate, execute. Fantastic. Now, we talked about motion, speed, disorient. I, for me, Christian Watson's doing a good job of play speed coming across, and that allows Zach Tom and company to crash down this side of the, the line on this handoff. So they rock and roll this with the safeties, and you'll see the safety comes across because they're running split flow. So they ran the motion. They run the tight end across with split flow. Safety comes across, and you see 20 sitting in the box here at the, what's at the 41-yard line. He's sitting between the hashes. He's been following that tight end out. The tight end's just running split flow, cracking on, 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 fifth, on 51. And now we got just a downhill run, probably one of AJ's better runs of the day for 11 yards first down, big time. Now, here's the Chris Jones effect. I was just talking about running K4, K5. It's like a full slide. They're basically saying right here, look, Chris Jones has already beat both our guards. He's, he's a problem. He's a real problem. So, in this offense, we're not as worried about their defensive end. So, we're going to run running back, tight end, whatever, and we're going to full slide this to the right, and our running back, tight end, they can kind of take care of the outside guy. The problem is uh, 90, Omanejo, for, for, used to play for the Texans. He's a good pass rusher. So, now you got, you got Patrick Taylor on 90. That is a ridiculous mismatch that is unnecessary because 51 cannot rush against Elgin Jenkins. So even if you check down and pop back out and give himself a chance, Panning ends up getting a sack here. And it's like, it's like, what do you expect to happen? That This is a tough ask, I think, for 27 Patrick Taylor to be able to block 90 on his own. That's one of those you hope they're running a second guy at him so he can take a real legitimate shot and then the second guy cleans up, kind of like they did on the, on the, on the case before. See the film study here pop up. You know, he sees this look. We're talking about Keisha Nixon on the pick. And let me get back to it. So when you're watching film, you're seeing the top of the numbers and the outside receiver. You're seeing the split. And you start thinking, like, in your head, where have I seen this before? What's the situation? Where are we on the – okay, what do they run? So as soon as he sees this, he knows already he's going over the top. Now, they could just run the arrow out, and he could catch a, a three-yard pass. But they're hoping that they catch him trying to go underneath, and they get to go. Because Keyshawn goes – uh, Nixon goes over the top, makes a fantastic – he doesn't even ID this ball until the last second. I mean, this, is a, this is an absolutely phenomenal uh, interception. Minute 57 in the game. 
This is the same deal. Now you get your tight end out there blocking on your end. We got step down. Uh, Chris Jones being blocked by Zach Tom. It's a mismatch. Chris Jones against anybody one on one is a mismatch on our team. I mean, he'll just bull. Eventually, he'll bull rush everybody. Okay. But this is a really smart play, and everyone goes, well, "Why is that a smart play?" You took a sack, and I, you, me, I think it's a. I don't know if you call it because it's third. It's was it third and six? Maybe you run the ball here when you run a draw or something. Run a screen. I don't know. We haven't run a screen all day. Maybe you run a screen here. Easy, easy for me to say now. But the fact that he took the sack is huge because there's a minute 56 left on the clock. The Chiefs have no timeouts. Okay. Now, we know that Patrick Mahomes can do with 13 seconds. We don't want to give him any more time. So now they jog out the field goal unit. Now we're down to a minute 14. So he hits the field goal. Of course, if he misses this, everything I say, everybody goes, ah, see, you could, you know, it wasn't a good idea. But he makes it. We're down to a minute 10. So you knock 46 seconds off the clock by taking the sack. You give Patrick Mahomes 70 seconds to do something with the football. That's a big deal. Now, the end of this game, I'm just going to call it the official takeover. This, this was absolutely for both sides. This was atrocious officiating that just – they have to be able to review – they've got to be able – they have to do something here. So the first one is the obvious one. Patrick Mahomes, this is in every way a legal hit. He's not out of bounds. Shoulder to shoulder. Everything about that is legal. There's nothing wrong with it. And the big deal is it's second and 10. They're fighting for yards. Patrick has to make himself – if he makes himself available for, for contact here, it's on him. If he if he's fighting for out of bounds and you take a shot, they'll call it. This is – he's fighting for yards. This is an absolutely ridiculous call. Great play by 34. I mean, it's, just a, it's just a ridiculous call. It's just an absolutely ridiculous call. So now we got, on the other side of it, this is one of the worst calls of the year. And it worked out for the Packers. This is one of the worst calls of the year. A game where you have blatant pass interference on the four-yard line, I mean, this is just – and, look, let's be honest, he probably drops it anyways. That's blatant P.I. You're losing a game on that. There's a lot of different reasons you lose this game. You shouldn't be in the position if you're the Chiefs. If you're the Packers, it's like, hey, we, we missed a couple you – know, they missed a couple calls on us too. But in the spotlight, to not be able to review these plays is just – it's absolutely atrocious. And then there's one more that's just as egregious and obvious. It doesn't have as big a, a, big a consequence. But right here, there's 24 seconds left on the clock. It's third and two. They get the first down. Fair enough, Okay. We drive the ball backwards. If you're driving, if the ball goes back, in other words, if the running back is going away from from the end zone, out of bounds, you wind the or the running back, the ball carrier, the, the clock's winding. Watch the, the Green Bay Packers whole bench wind the clock, wind the clock, wind the clock, and this lady, for whatever reason, stops the clock at 19 seconds. This is this is this is a monumental screw up because the time that it takes. For everybody to get back to the line of scrimmage, get set up and spike the ball, seven seconds. You're down to 12 seconds. So 12 seconds looks a lot different. They get four plays off in the last 19 seconds. Okay? But <laughs> doesn't matter. We'll take the dub. They end up getting the, the whole PI thing in the end zone. It's another deal where you go, I don't understand – like it doesn't, it doesn't compute in my brain that that uh, you can just do whatever you want. Aside from like literally horse call or tackle the guy in the in the jump ball in situation at the end, but at the same time, if you called it, it would be like if I was you know if I was an offense, maybe my whole offense would be like just just throw hail marys because you know, I, what would you do? All right, so what I got wrong? Number one in our matchups. We talk about Aaron Jones being injured, Chiefs box seven. Uh, how are the Packers going to create opportunities in the run game? We talked about Jaden Reed. Obviously, he's doing a great job. And then Kristen Watson had a couple of the plays that didn't show, but a couple of end arounds. That one, I think one got for a first down, and then he pulled his hammy. Hope he's going to be okay. Um, this game in particular, you know, so we run for – I'm going to get this. I want to get the numbers right here because I'll screw this up. 
So rushing, we go for a 25 for 129, 5.2. The big thing here is A.J. Dillon, for the first time in a long time, is over four yards to carry, 4.1. Jordan Love goes for five. Christian goes for seven and a half. Patrick Taylor has two rushes for 29 yards. Okay, so he's our main guy talking about A.J., but he gets 18 carries for 73 yards. And the big deal is we're moving the sticks. And they did it by keeping these guys on. So the motion – the motion key and giving the ball to Watson, giving the ball to Jaden Reed. We had some opportune calls. Like I think one of the, I think uh, Patrick Taylor's biggest run was on uh, a two minute drill. But you kept moving. I, the big thing for me, honestly, was that we were able to double team. We were able to turn shoulders, and we were able to get AJ to the second level. And especially when Trent Quill went out, and it was happening before that the first drive. But with Trent Cool, when you kind of felt watching their tape, the way that he attacks the line of scrimmage, that was going to be a loss that would be tough for them to make up. The other thing that happened that was surprising, to be fair, was they didn't really bring guys off the slot as much as I thought they would. I didn't see the run, the run uh, blitzes as much as I thought we would, given this. And part of that's the the the, the quarterback and the, and the skills, the, the the receiving core last week. I think it's the Raiders. It's much different. Aiden O'Connell's not the same player. So maybe they respect Jordan Love. Maybe they respect him too much. I don't know. But they certainly gave us an opportunity to be successful. And I think if you if you get A.J. over four, I think you have to feel good about that. Number two, Kelsey versus who? Sam Laporta started off hot last week. And, you know, how are we going to deal with Kelsey? Kelsey's going to get hit, right? Kelsey, and he had – yesterday he had what? He had, he had four catches, 81 yards, 27 yards long. He made some plays when the plays needed to be made. But they just – this game was about possession. Like, they could run the ball well. They didn't have a ton of touches. And so the opportunities were limited. I mean, like, you watch this – the game goes by fast. It was just not – the running plays, the clock keeps running. Like, there's just not opportunity. So that was really – if you talk about, like, why this thing was so successful from maybe their playmaking ability. One, Patrick Mahomes, you know, a lot of times was pressured and had, had to move around in the pocket. Running the ball was more effective than passing the ball. But really, the Green Bay Packers offense did such a good job of keeping them off the field that it, it's it's just hard to create that rhythm. Now, the, our secondary did a good job. But let's be – Travis Kelsey is going to get open if he wants to get open. There's nobody in the league that's just going to summarily shut him down unless you just stick man on him. It would have to be – we saw what happened last week when they did that. Rasheed Rice went for 108 yards in the touch. Number three, Packers pass rush versus the Chief offensive line. Smith and Gary, they played well. They beat those guys early. Um, uh, Van Ness had a sack, beat him, beat one early. Uh, guy, uh, Kenny Clark got into the back. My take here is that we did have the advantage. I think we, again, the game didn't dictate necessarily that we were just going to get a ton of opportunities to rush on Mahomes. Mahomes passed the ball. 33 times, which is on the surface. That means he dropped back probably 37, 38, 39 times. We ended up pressuring him a decent amount. We ended up getting three sacks. I don't know what the actual pressure numbers were, but the rush lane integrity, you know, the passing lane integrity with a guy who's mobile like, like Mahomes is and, and good at, at, at buying time, still really have to work on improving that. It's not, it's, it's, there's a fine line between telling your guys, look, you don't have a two way go, you have to go this way. And saying it's a free for all. Like if you give um, if you give TJ Watt or you Miles Garrett, they probably have a two way go every play. They're probably like, you know what? I mean, let's just decide T E T. Those guys are probably like, hey, I don't care where you go, because I know you're going to make more game changing important plays than the the quarterback is evading that rush, but. The D tackles also have to know, hey, if he has a two-way go, sometimes I just have to bull, watch, and, and, and extend, release, and get out to the flat and chase that quarterback. Keys to victory, stay on schedule. Talked about it last week. They did it. They did a great job moving the sticks. The rushing game was, was of master importance. Jordan Love and, the, and company played really well. But if we're just talking about how are you able to stay on schedule, for me, it's, it, it's the running game. And I say this, too. When you're able to run those jet sweeps, reverse arounds, and they don't hit, and you can still move the sticks, now that's a new dimension of confidence, right? So we don't, those don't even have to hit. We just got to show you. 
that's why I put fair enough or whatever. You know, I think you have to on the on the tape because I think you got to do it, and it just adds this dimension to your offense. Keep them honest. The pass rush plan we talked about. I I think we I, we didn't do great on that. Could have done better. And I'll be honest with you. There was a lot of times in the game where I was like, why are Preston and Rashawn Gary not in the game right now? And I think it's because the, the series were so long. But there's a lot of plays, where, especially like in 64 is in. I mean, even in Donovan Smith's hurt, going like, man, I would be hitting that guy. I wouldn't put, I wouldn't allow Van Ness or and if, I wouldn't allow anybody but Patrick or but uh, Preston or Rashawn be able to play over those guys. If if 79's hurt or 64 is in the game, like I'm not letting anybody play over that dude except for my two best guys. Cause I'm going to eat all day. Like I'm not giving anybody else a chance. Like you got to earn the chance to go play against that guy, an injured, an injured Donovan or whoever 64 is. I'm, I'm, that's me. I'm taking advantage of that as much as I can. And then the third one, key to victory was pre-snap recognition. And I, I just, this is another Matt LaFleur has just done a really, really good job at putting together a game plan, the entire offensive staff, Stenovich, everybody. And then preparing this group or whether they're, you know, we talk about the meetings that they're having on their own, whatever they're doing to prepare now seems so much better than what they were doing at the beginning of the season. Part of that's maturation, part of that's experience, but part of that's the process. Let's not minimize that part of this, okay? Because if, if you're a coach in the National Football League, you got to be talking about, hey, we're going to keep working this, we're going to keep our process the same, and we're going to make sure that this is going to work over the long haul. So my big takeaway here, I think, is that you know the ascension of of love in this receiving core is is changing the trajectory of this season more than anything else. We're seeing that I think defensively you, you're seeing guys that you want to step up and win or stepping up and winning. Uh, I think we maybe took a step back with McGuffey not in there this week in the running game, but I think the ascension of Jordan Love, the ascension of the receiving core, the tight end core, um, and just the way they're being used. And whatever, you know, trust your eyes, trust your guys kind of mentality that, that they have is, is huge. A couple of listener questions before we get out of here. Uh, who looked better? Every week it's the same question for you guys. Who looked better, John Rennie Jr.? John Rennie Jr. is the starter on this team. Sean Ryan played like a series or two. Like it's not even – I'm just the too simple math, okay? If John Rennie Jr. plays 50 plays and has two bad plays, that's what? 4% of the plays he does are, are poor, so he's a 96, okay? If Sean Ryan plays 10 plays and has and has two bad plays, looks a lot different now, right? 20%. If he has one bad play, we, we know he did. You know, you got you got beat by Chris Jones. So t- it's just you, – if you can't do it. Like the math does – if you want to do the math, the math doesn't – but if you're just doing the eyeball test, John Rennie Jr. does a lot of good – the difference – here's the second part of this question because what's the deal with the improved O-line play? Are they playing better? I don't think you're seeing as many egregious mistakes from Josh Myers. I don't think you're seeing whiffs from him. I don't think you're seeing whiffs from, from John Rennie Jr. Obviously, Zach Tom continues to play at an extremely high level, right? And I think his ascension makes the entire group look a lot better, quite frankly. But you're not seeing these, like, all these things that were happening at the beginning of the season, you're not seeing as much of those. They still happen. But there's been games where you watch, you know, you watch Myers, and he's – Whiffing on guys. He's not whiffing on guys right now. Last two weeks, he's not whiffing on anybody. John Rennie Jr., you know, he gets, he gets beat, he play here, play there, it happens. He's out uh, outside toss game, pull game. Like, I could show you plays where he's navigating the pull where the tight end gets blown up, that he navigates around and gets his second block, and nobody will notice it. He plays well. Like, he's not playing. Like, there's, there's, for me, there's no contest here. I don't know what we're talking about. Now, the other guy deserves – at three and six, yeah, you have this conversation. But now you're in the playoff hunt. And if you want to keep to develop the guy because you think he's going to be a project and it's worth it, again, I, last week, I don't see a much of a trade-off. I don't see a much of a trade-off now. But you're not going to get you're not going to get me to say Sean, Sean Ryan's playing better than John Ryan Jr., so you should put him in. It's ridiculous. Here's a good question. What would DCs do to adjust to our more explosive passing game? If it was me? Pressure up the middle. I pressure up the middle because I think that's where the soft spot is on the offense, on the offensive line. And I think what you're, I mean, every, it, it depends what you have, right? If you have a ton of safety, if you have a ton of like uh, really good corners where well, you're going to go, man, 
and you, hey, I trust my guys. I'm going to send more guys to get the ball out of his hands faster. I think what you're seeing is, we, we talked about it a little bit already, but when you have all the – when you have the motion, you have the jet sweeps, and you have the rounds, and you have the misdirection, when you have all that stuff – and they didn't even run screens. Like, their screen game is nothing. But if you get the screen game going now, you got – from a defensive standpoint, you're starting to have a real issue because Christian Watson is now – all of a sudden, kind of back to where he was at the end of last year when he was balling out. And he's a problem. And people are going to be scared of him. And they're going to bracket him. And they're going to look at him. And their eyes are going to, safety eyes are going to be here because they don't want to get beat by a guy who's that fast. And now you got Jaden Reed, who's a, he's a real problem. Like Romeo Dobbs is, is a – Romeo Dobbs is not an afterthought but because he's a really good route runner, ball catcher. He made some plays last night. But when you look at like, okay, he's your – second or third option and then you got Wicks and you got you know um I'm forgetting 18's name forgive me because he he had another good day Millie Keith uh free agent I didn't know he was a free agent good lord good player but you have all these other guys and they're all making plays but they make plays don't get it twisted like if you have a guy like Christian Watson this is why athletes uh, get paid the most athletes because if you got a guy like Christian Watson who can take the top off and scare, like generally scares the cornerback, the safety, everything else opens up. If you got a guy like Jaden Reed who, like, they don't know how they're going to give him the ball, like a Debo Samuel, not quite there, don't get me wrong. But if you don't know how he's going to get the ball, how he's going to affect it, now all of a sudden the game plan, like, coordinators are staying up later. Like, what do we do with this? What do we do with this? Do we, do we, are, are we going to spy Jordan Love? Okay, we can't do that because what do we do with Jaden Reed then? Like, who's getting double? We put Dobbs and, and, and I guarantee you this. How many times do you think in the red zone you're going to see Dobbs and and uh, Christian Watson on the same side in single coverage again? Like, probably not very many making plays like that. The last thing I was, you know, I'll say about this week is you, you don't ever really know um, how these things are going to go, and this team has played. So much different, I think, than the last couple, you know, earlier in the season. It looks like a different team. It looks like they had some belief. And again, it all it really comes down to like, can your quarterback play catch with your receivers at, at a high level? Man, it's, I'm stupid, but that's what it is. And this guy's doing it. He's starting to do it at, at a high level. And because of that, you look at the upcoming Giants, we're going to be favored. Bucks, we're going to be favored at home. Going into Carolina, definitely going to be favored in that game. I mean, definitely. I mean, that, that, that poor team, good Lord. You look at your next three games before Christmas, and it's like, we're going to the playoffs. Unless something catastrophic happens, you're going to the playoffs. So knowing that and having that confidence that you're building something that is going to allow you to probably not win the Super Bowl, but get some experience for these guys, get the fans. You know, every, life is better when you're winning, right? So everything, you learn more, everything goes better. You get more creative, you get more you get more personality, you get all of it, all of it, because you're building, you're building. But this suddenly looks so much different than a month ago. It's hard to it's hard to remember a team with the Packers that looks so different, so, so different from like October to end of November, beginning of December. It's crazy. But it's been fun to watch. We're gonna do a preview show on the Packers and the and the Giants here at the I'm gonna. I, I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll I'll put it out on Thursday still, but I'm gonna I'll I'm gonna record it on Wednesday. So guys, hit me up, Michael 68 on Twitter, Process to Perform on Instagram. Subscribe, like, rate, review us on our YouTube channel, Process to Perform. And until next time, thanks for watching. <laughs>